Hey, hi, hello, and good afternoon. My name is Amanda, and welcome to Harmony Portal Tarot Live. Happy Friday, everybody. Yes, you can still probably hear the illness I had at the beginning of the month. Still in my voice, still in my throat, <laughs> clearing my throat constantly. Uh, it's funny, too, because there's a, uh, in my series that I'm writing, um, my main character's therapist, she always, like, instead of, like, focusing, because she's only 14, so only fo instead of focusing on her sessions, she's counting the number of times that her psychiatrist uh, clears his throat. And <laughs> so every time I clear my throat or want to write in in my book that someone else clears their throat, like, <clears throat> like, hey, there's someone behind you, I have to then think about Dr. Wexler, her therapist, <laughs> because she makes such a point, like, that she's mentally logging. She's like, wow, we hit a record today, 73 times in one hour. <laughs> so yeah, every time I clear my throat, that's what I think of now. So funny. Uh, so how is everybody? Hi, Lindsay B. Welcome, welcome. And I have, oh no, I just dinged my candle that I made. <clears throat> I knocked it down. Um, but yes, I made some what are called reversal candles. Um, this is something, if you know anything about hoodoo, not quite voodoo, but hoodoo, hoodoo, um, this is a reversal spell candle. So I have these little um, molds that they, they're like this, they have a little circle and then a tube. And to make these they're slightly bigger than like the chime spell candles that you get like on Amazon or what have you. And I actually tried, I went on Amazon to look for that size specifically. Ethan, oh my goodness, hi Ethan, how's it going? Dorothy Collins, how are you? Yeah, we're gonna get into the free one card poll here very soon. I'm just doing a little bit of show and tell. Um, but yes, I was looking for, let me go grab, I have my little box of spell candles over here. If you grab one, let's see. Here we go. Ah. Doesn't want to come out. Okay. Third time is the charm. Okay. So this is the red chime spell candle. This is my spell candle. I really wanted it pigmented. Really black, really red. So this candle, I wanted one this size, and I looked and looked. I couldn't find any. I did find a mold on Amazon for this size. I, I think it's this size, or maybe just slightly bigger, but smaller than this. I mean, these are about the same height, but I wanted a thinner candle because it, you could do your work a lot quicker with something smaller like this rather than like this. Um, but, um, yeah, it has been a hot minute, right, Ethan? <laughs> um, but yeah, I wanted it really pigmented, really dark. And for some reason, this reminds me of like dynamite or a battery or something. But what you do with these candles is you set your intention for anything so this is something that is coming toward you that you don't want coming toward you. And in the traditional hoodoo uh, way, it is that you just send that energy back to sender. But I actually amend that with my own intention to send the ener any negative energy. I mean, let's just say for the sake of, okay, we're going to light this candle to reverse any negative, anything that the matrix is sending at us that is not in our highest alignment with our true spirit. So let's just say that's the intention we set and then we light our candle, but there's other things we have to do to prepare. Like you, you lay the candle on a mirror, mirrors our portals, we're sending this back, yada, yada, yada. But um, just to get to the point is instead of sending that energy back to the matrix or the sender, whoever the person may be, you know, if you know someone's, you, you, you know, maybe think or suspect that somebody, you know, has an eye on your man and you want them to just not be interfering in your relationship. Or, you know, for the sake of this um, example, uh, maybe th something specific, anything where the matrix is blocking your money flow or your cash flow or your abundance, um, that energy will then be recycled back to the original source creator. That's kind of how I amend the practice of a reversal spell candle. Um, but these are also very potent, very powerful. You can use the red on top, black on bottom for, it's kind of the universal reversal, <laughs> if we will. Um, but if you're looking specifically to clear an entity or any host of thought forms, implants, aggregores, belief systems, limiting beliefs that you want to, you know, reverse or get rid of, 
you would want a white on top, black on bottom for that. And then um, anything that's just not flowing properly or in alignment with your true spirit and your love life, you would want a black on top, red on bottom. Um, and I learned actually not how to make these, but um, you know, the different candle colors and everything from Maya Zahira's book, um, the psychic, let's see, the psychic defense source book, I think it's called. Um, and then she has another one. Psychic attack source book is one. And I can't remember the other one off the top of my head, <laughs> but they're both in Kindle unlimited. If you have Kindle unlimited, you can read them quote unquote for free or, you know, as part of your Kindle unlimited. Um, but you can also buy her books on Amazon. And especially if you're dealing with any kind of spiritual warfare, psychic attack, which every single person on this planet, if you are incarnated, you are in the spiritual war. You, you have, you may feel like your life is Lottie Dot, and I, I envy you for that. Um, but there's thoughts being placed, there's um, programming, there's um, things that are throttling your energy and keeping you stuck or sick or blocked or in poverty or you know any number of things or any kind of combination of things. All you need to do to find out, not all you need to do, it's a lot of work, uh, but to find out what how the deck is or how this matrix is stacked against you is to look into your astrology and not just any astrology. You want to look into Babylonian astrology. So if you go on and I, if you've heard me say this, you can tune out for a second. For those, I do see a lot of new or faces that have been here, but haven't been here for a while today. So I'm, I'm just kind of reiterating what I've been saying over the past weeks to about a month here on this channel. Um, if you go to astroseek.com, click on, I think if you're on a computer, it might be slightly different on the phone, but if you're on the computer, it's kind of in the top right below the, the Astro Seek logo to run your birth chart or create your birth chart. And you want to use Equal House System or Velo, V-E-L-O-W, or V-E-H-L-O-W is how you spell that. And the Ayanamsha you want to select is Fagan Bradley. And you have to know your birth time and location for this to work uh, specifically. If you don't have that, a lot of times if you order your, or you know, go pay for your birth certificate, it will have your birth time on it, but not all birth certificates do or, or have that information. Um, I was just lucky that my mom, uh, kept, uh, what do you call them? Uh, <laughs> photo albums. Gosh, I can't think today. Um, and has my birth time right there. Pictures of me right after I was born. So, um, of course they were, went through a house fire. So they are, uh, a little worse for wear than most people's uh, <laughs> photo albums, but they they still exist, so that's good. Uh, we did lose quite a few photos during that, but we had that one, I think two two or three albums, just not not a whole lot of albums. And my mom used to have a lot of photo albums. That used to be the thing back in the day. You take pictures, you put them in an album. You take more pictures, put them in another album. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, so there's this candle. Um, I just made a bunch. I. I'm sending them to a few friends to test them out, see how potent they are, set a lot of intentions. Um, and new round of money candles. I moved my other, so I had my original batch of money candles in like a black tin similar to this. Um, and I only did one wick in the middle of that and it did tunnel, not too shabbily. Like, um, is this one's tunneling? I mean, even, when you go, yeah, like you can see how it tunnels, like it's, it's going to burn down in this, it's going to burn, like kind of to form a tunnel through the wax and leave wax along the outside, which if you're just lighting a candle for the first time, you usually want to allow it to burn for at least two hours, but no more than four uh, at any time. But especially the first few times you do burn your candle, you want to burn it around two hours so that you can have that equal melt pool. And then eventually as, um, like in these tins, you, it, it usually takes three or four times. And then by then you're getting the wax all the way to the outer perimeter, um, melting in. And then of course, if you're only burning it for 20 minutes, you're going to start getting tunneling. And then the next time you light it, you burn it only 20 minutes. It doesn't have enough time for that melt pool to fully, you know, acquire. So you will accidentally tunnel your own candle. So there's some hot tips. And of course, every time you, uh, snuff your candle out. And I say if you're using spell candles, you don't want to blow them out unless it's something you're looking to get rid of. But you before you blow it out, if that's the case, or snuff it, you know, just um, you know, like with these, you could put the lid on if you wanted or use a little candle snuffer or what have you. Uh, sometimes you can just put a, a jar or a glass that's bigger of, than the candle over the candle and it'll put the flame out. 
but you will set the intention that your spell is still continuing to work even though you can't be there with your candle. Um, and of course, if you're buying any candles like this, you're gonna wanna remove all the little, um, like this little gold bar is wax, so you can leave that, but like the anise here, the, um, the dollar bill, and some of these um, bigger crystals you do wanna remove just so they don't interfere with the burning of the candle and you don't wanna burn your place down and having a huge fire hazard of a, you know, hundred dollar little toy hundred dollar bill in there. <laughs> oh, Florence has donated for a reading. Yay! Cool, cool. Um, so oh, we've got, let's see. We've got two donations already. Wow, you guys, we're cooking today. So Brianna, we have a, a donation from you for a one card read and for a full read for Florence. I'm actually right, uh, you lovely ladies on the list. And then we're gonna get into our free one car poll for everybody who's here. Yeah, I don't know, I'm just, I'm having fun with candles, so I thought I'd share some candle stuff. Um, I'm sure not everybody here cares anything about candles, but for those that do, there it is. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna move that out of my way, get our donation list started here. And we got B, Decree, one card. And Florence B. Full read. Okay, so boom, there we have it. Donation list. Okay, so we have eight people. Put an 888 in the chat, and that lets me know that you would like a free one card poll today. And what, what deck are we going with? Shapeshifters Oracle? Yeah. Oracle of Shapeshifters, I guess is what it's called. So that's what we're going with today. All right, here we go, friends. Let's see what we need to know for those watching. And of course, I'm setting the intention that we're not just picking up on the energy of the, what the quote unquote matrix has for you, but we're tuning into your true spirit to see how you, you personally, um, oh, I spelled donation wrong, didn't I? Whoops, I'll spell it correctly. Here we go. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Um, anyway, what was I saying? I was saying something and then, oh yes. Um, the intention that I set is I'm tuning into your true spirit to get something that may even help trip up the matrix or the triggers here that are set for you, like the booby traps that are set for you. Um, we're going to try to get around those by setting the intention to connect to your true spirit and not just the energies of this realm or the matrix, okay? And those of you that have been here a while, you already know that, but for those that haven't been here a while, I'm, I'm doing things a little differently than I used to. So here it is. <laughs> so uh, Michelle, Michelle's the first one, and we have the delicate fairy and her ferrets. Change is natural, good, and yes, it can hurt. And we have the number 24. So between now and April 24th, there might be some changes you're making. And again, even when they're good, they can hurt. You know, think of exercise as one example or um, just something that, you know, letting go of a friend that we love this friend dearly, but we know they're toxic or not good for us. And sometimes letting them go, it doesn't mean that we have to let them go forever. But sometimes, you know, if you love something, let it go. If it comes back, it's yours, you know, especially if there's friction there. Um maybe some cord cutting with something this even could be a habit that you are looking to change or shift or break in your life um doing some sort of intention before really setting out on your journey to make changes or shifts might be really beneficial for you michelle all right tunisia 1994 all right that's when book one of my series is taking place mostly and book two and well all of book two and then part of book three. <laughs> and then we dip over into 1995 in book three and beyond. <laughs> so fun. Uh, it's fun to have an interest and fixated on fashion. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it's so fun to have a creative outlet, isn't it? All right, Ethan, let's get you. Oh, no, Tunisia, Tunisia. Tunisia's card first and then Ethan. So Tunisia. We have here Little Red Riding Hood. I am not a victim. Yes, and this really is kind of what I was saying about setting the intention to not just let life happen, quote unquote, to you, but see how, you know, especially this is, this is the gift that triggers are. Yes, it sucks and they're hard and it's not fun. And especially if you're feeling like a victim in any way because of certain triggers in your life or people saying the same thing to you, even though they're different people and they, there is something in your astrology, which creates the persona for you in this lifetime 
that is making this a thing. So the better, or I would say, some of the best gifts you can get, and this is for everybody, but also Tunisia, the best gift you can get is someone to trigger you because that shows you where your weaknesses or vulnerabilities are. And when you can work on those triggers and then maybe just not allow them to happen, you know, or do that deep inner shamanic journeying work to get those triggers to release or let go, you've really done some work for yourself. So there might be something you are really looking at, Tunisia, in how to release feeling like a victim, either to, you know, having to pay all these bills and you feel like you can never get ahead, or if there's this one friend that's always giving these passive aggressive comments, or, you know, whatever it is. It's about identifying those triggers and then feeling deeper into it. It's not about thinking about it. It's about feeling into the triggers and seeing what they're trying to show you. That could be step one, but step two is completely detonating or alleviating these triggers for good and so they're not a trigger anymore all right ethan let's get ethan's card come here artemis of the forest now you are independent and free so there's something you are likely in the very near future freeing yourself from a lot of stuff coming up today in the our little collective here about habits or belief systems not feeling worthy, feeling like a victim. There's a lot of this energy coming up. And I think this is because of the eclipse. I really do. Um, especially this eclipse is happening in um, the sign of Pisces. If you look where it's actually at in the sky, it's in Pisces. Um, I do believe it's, I want to say it's Aries or somewhere. I think Aries for Western astrology. Um, but yes, so this really is during this eclipse portal here, uh, I hate that word for, for what this eclipse is, but that's exactly what these powers around here uh, that control this place are doing. They're utilizing a lot of this energy for their own, you know, they're feeding on it, you know. Um, so this is about you breaking yourself free in some way. And a lot of times we can get into a creative flow state and that can help free us from certain things. All right, Steffers. Welcome, Steffers. It's been a minute. I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing well. All right, let's get Steffers a card in alignment with her true spirit. What does she need to know right now? And we have here the Golden Phoenix. Something you thought finished bursts back to life. And that's another theme that happens during these eclipses is, you know, these unfinished business or these things that have been on the back burner or the things we've stuffed down into the darkest recesses of our spirit they're coming up. They're lurking up from the shadows for us to face. And um, no exception uh, during this time, but we have the number 12 here. And one plus two is three. There's very creative solutions you're finding, Steffers, to these things that are circling back, cycling back. Something you thought you finished. Maybe there was an argument you had with someone or um, just kind of a going of separate ways you had with someone and now somehow they're cycling back or someone like that person is circling or cycling back. Could even be a bad habit you kicked and, uh, you know, you went out with friends and I don't know, say it was alcohol or something and you, you took one drink and now you're kind of not saying you're an alcoholic, but this is just like, a you know, uh, an example. Um, and, you know, you, you get a taste of something and then it's like, ah, <laughs> um, been there in many ways uh, and many times, like with soda, like I quit drinking soda for like six years straight. And then, you know, all it takes is like one little sip. And then you're like, oh, it's so good. I'm now craving it. Three days after I had that sip and then you go buy one and then you buy another one and then now you're buying it and you're having it in your fridge and we don't, we don't have it in our fridge, but like, you know, when I'm out once in a while, I will, I will do that, but I don't want to do it, but I do. Uh, so there's could be something like that habit that you've kicked that you're maybe still trying to kick down the, down the road. Um, that's kind of rearing its head right now. All right. Anyone looking to get a reading, a one card pull, I'll put an 888. That lets me know. That's like the secret code <laughs> to get your card. Oh, I'm so glad it resonated. You're so welcome, Stuffers. Thanks again. Um, let's see. Oops, my chat just jumped. Okay. We've got a few few more people joining us. Hello, everybody. Um, Linda. Hi, Linda. Happy Friday, Linda. Let's get Linda's card. Card for Linda. What does Linda need to know in alignment with her true spirit? Let me get two cards, you guys. Woo! So the unending sadness of looking back. Ooh. So I don't know. Again, Eclipse is bringing these things from the depths, from the past. So endless regret, obsessive grief, replaying the past, negative nostalgia. And I'm not saying you're the one creating this. I'm saying, again, this eclipse kind of portal. And again, I hate saying that, but that's that's really what it is. Um, 
is such a powerful time to kick up and, you know, get these old wounds festering again. Um, so if you are feeling a certain type of way, Linda, just know it's not your fault. And um, we kind of have this, like, I want to say this looks like a scarab beetle. I could be wrong. There's like hundreds of thousands, if not close to a million different types of beetles, so, but it's a type of beetle. <laughs> um, but the beetle, if you look up the spirit animal specifically of a scarab beetle, you might find some additional wisdom, Linda, on that. Um, but we have the number nine or 36 adding up to nine on the bottom there. So closing out a cycle. There's a purpose why these griefs, these, you know, past, whatever it is from your past is coming up, even if it's just thoughts um, or feelings or just kind of missing someone that, you know, maybe they haven't passed away, but you haven't seen them in a long time. Uh, there could be something like that going on as well. Um, but a loyal guardian, a magical protector is there for you. And she is hugging a dog. So this could be a dog or a cat, an animal, a pet, either of yours or a pet of someone else's that feels near and dear to you. Of course, use your intuition to what this looks like. It also could be, um, you know, just like spirit guardian. Um, and I know we're kind of, we don't, we don't want to get into the realm of spirit guides and all that, but like there is a protective force, even if we just want to call that our own true spirit. But for you, Linda, it's very close by protecting you right now. So just peace of mind as you go through maybe any grief or just sadness from the past rearing its head um, over these next few weeks. Your spirit has your back. All right. Florence has her first question posted. Thank you so much for that. Or her question, I should say. Let's get Florence's card. Ooh, here it is. Right here. I feel it. I see it. There it is. Pose brave flight. You will not let fear stop you this time. So for you, Florence, there is something coming up from your past. And this is an opportunity that maybe passed you by or you kind of thought about doing something or taking action in a direction, but then you kind of pulled back. And now it's coming again. It's coming around again. It's rearing its head again. But again, this, unlike a lot of the uh, other readings that we've done so far today, this actually feels like an exciting opportunity. And you kind of let it go by the wayside or pass you by because you either felt you weren't ready or you didn't have the skill to pull it off. Or maybe there was even a little bit of that self-doubt that really is has nothing to do with the self. It's implanted thoughts of, oh, you're not good enough to do that. Who do you think you are to shine? Thoughts like that might have kind of pushed this opportunity away for you or you just kind of set it on that back burner. But now's the time you're ready. You're ready to kind of uh, step into that like uh, like fool energy. But also there's very queen of wands energy, very sovereign energy with this as well. So you're really embodying this go-getter type energy with an opportunity that you kind of had in your awareness at one point that kind of went by the wayside, but now it's back. Or very soon it will be back, Florence. This couldn't be a travel opportunity that you've been like kind of toying with because I know you love your travel and that's awesome. All right. Queen Bee, hello, hello. You're so welcome, Michelle. Absolutely. Dorothy, let's get you a card, my dear. Hello, Dorothy. Dorothy's card in alignment with her true spirit. And we have here the butterfly ferrets. I am reborn, number five. So you might even be feeling very bright, shiny, and new in some area coming up. You are, you know, after some big death process or tower moment, again, doesn't have to be literal. A lot of times these are just like, um, you know, they feel almost at times like catastrophic losses in our lives or, um, you know, loss of a job, just loss of direction in life sometimes can happen. Um, but after we kind of make it to the other side of that, there's this new opportunity for this rebirth. And that's kind of where you're coming into right now, Dorothy. And what a beautiful time for rebirth the springtime, at least up here in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it might be a little different, but <laughs> uh, the energy of it is still there for you, Dorothy, if that's the case. All right. Seems like it's me breaking free from the norms of society, of society instilled in me, especially as a gay guy. Yes, Ethan. Yeah. Just because you're a guy doesn't mean you can't enjoy fashion, right? Love it. And you're most welcome for the card. Absolutely. All right. So, oops, my chat just jumped. Let me Oh, you're so welcome, everybody. Yes, absolutely, Tunisia. Totally, totally. Um, let's see. Oh, it resonated. I think I read that part. Uh, okay. Divyansha Mishra. Oh, my gosh. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. But let's get you a card, my dear. Let's get you a card. Hi, Amber. <laughs> All right. Divyansha. And we have, ooh, two cards for Divyansha. We have, uh, okay, I said, I think I said this correctly, or maybe not last time, Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl, 
and the priestess of time. The time has come. The time to act is now. So the time is upon you. You're ready to take a leap, make a change in your life. The number 23 here, two plus three adds, adds up to five. So there's a big change coming for you that you're ready for. You're now ready. And then we have the fairy ring with new skills, advanced training, and rapid improvements. And then number 37, which is a new beginning. So you're ready to make a change with a new beginning in your life, uh, Divyansha. So I don't know if this is specifically uh, doing some sort of training or school or uh, stepping into a more prominent position at work, um, but you are learning new skills, you're advancing your skill level, and you're ready. The time has come. The time to act is now. I love that. Very cool message. All right. What's up next? We have Queen Bee. Queen Bee. Let's get into it for Queen Bee. Message from her true spirit. And we have here Miss Spiderweb. Reconsider your alliances and make new connections. And for you specifically, Queen Bee, I'm not seeing that you have anyone nefarious, you know, in your inner circle or anything like that. It's just you've grown maybe a bit stagnant, stale, or bored with some of your connections. This doesn't mean these are bad people that you have to walk away from. Um, and in fact, I would say where it says make new connections, you can make new connections with the people who are already in your life. You don't have to, you know, toss out your husband or your kids or your friends or your mom or, you know, whoever it is in your life. You can just find a new way to connect with them on a deeper level, a more spiritual level, a more just more camaraderie type of level. So maybe if you've been feeling like some of your connections, even your closest connections have kind of become rote or go with the flow, not very um, creative and just kind of boring or blah. Now's the time to kick it up. Try something new. Go, you know, if it's you and a spouse, uh, you know, try out a new restaurant, go on a date night, you know, do something you haven't done in a while or something you've never done. Just, you know, Blow the doors off the mundane. That's what this is asking. You don't have to go crazy or anything, but just step out of the comfort zone and you're going to really see um, some creativity because that's what you're really thirsting for right now because the spider is about creativity. All right. All righty. Amber, nine in. Let's get your card going for you, my dear. Amber's message from her true spirit. What does she need to know right now? And we have here, bats in the belfry. You can achieve great things. I love it. Wow. And I'm really getting a two of wands vibe from these two bats here. Um, I would normally consider bats more of an air energy because they do fly. But uh, for some reason, I'm getting a very fiery, very spiritual vibe here. So there might be some things that you're ready to do. But it's like you're not quite ready. And they, they are very much in alignment with your spiritual side or your, your true spirit. And I really do feel this has to do with your creativity. Um, and I haven't been called to do this for anyone else, but I'm doing it for you because I just felt called to pulling a tarot card just to see where it is Amber's being called to, by her true spirit, to achieve great things. <laughs> it's funny because I was seeing the two of swords and like, oh, you know, you think bats are air, two of, two of swords. And then you get two of swords. So you might be confused or just misunderstand, misunderstanding um, exactly what it is. And it's very interesting because the, the next card we have is the five of swords. And the two swords, oh, sorry, this card. <laughs> the two swords on the wall are actually broken. So she she figured something out and she is a little mad. Uh, but sometimes we got to get mad or, you know, get almost wrathful with certain things. It doesn't mean that we hate anybody or that we want to hurt anybody. But sometimes when enough is enough, we get pushed to the edge. And I feel like there's going to be this instance coming up where you're just fed up with something. And you're just saying, you know, basically F it. And now my ear's ringing. Um, so there might be psychic attack coming in as you say, you know, just F it. I'm going for what I want to do. I'm going for my dreams. This is my life. I'm sick of playing by everybody's rules or trying to step on eggshells around everybody else. F it. I'm done. And you're stepping into your own power. And you're walking away from the toxicity of something so that you can live out this purpose in a much more purposeful way. All right. So that was for Amber. Hope it resonated for you, my dear. And then Jessica Lynn. Hi, Jessica. How are you? Happy weekend. Or almost weekend, at least, in the U.S. All right. Jessica Lynn. Let's get you a card. Oh, you see 888 every day so many times. Well, there's another one for you, Amber. All right. 
So it's funny because we're not doing this deck, but I still had it in my hand. So Jessica, we've got some anxiety here. Um, maybe even sleepless nights. This is the nine of swords. So it's a different depiction than the person sitting up in their bed. It's almost like this person's in the void, but they're in a lot of pain. So there might be some mental and even emotional and just like psychiatric, like not psychiatric in that way, but like, like in your psyche. That's like what I'm trying to get to. Um, stuff that might even be in your subconscious that you're looking to clear. Let's just see if we can get any more information on that for Jessica. Little wolf, wolf girl, it's all right to be alone. Okay, so there's where this void comes in. Where it's completely, there's nothing in the void. There's no noise, there's no sound, there's no thought, there's no, you know, but it is the most creative place because it is the all and it is the nothing. Um, but this, you know, it can feel lonely. I'm sure it can feel lonely. But we have the number 18 here, which adds up to a nine. So you're closing something out where you are feeling alone. Even if you're in a crowd of people, sometimes you might be feeling alone lately. But there's something in your subconscious mind that is like feeling like it's keeping you trapped or stuck um, that you're closing out or you're kicking to the curb. This could even be belief systems thought, you know, again, with the swords, very mental processes. Um, again, Thoughts can be implanted into us that aren't even ours, but we think it's ours because we're thinking the thought. No, we're the one observing the thought being thought. <laughs> All right. So that was for Jessica. Let's see. All right. Oh, we just chat jumped a little bit. All right. Marlene. Hi, Marlene. Welcome, welcome. Let's get Marlene a card. Go into this deck for Marlene. What does Marlene need to know in alignment with her true spirit? Oh, you're so welcome, Queen Bee. I'm glad it makes sense. All right, Marlene. We have, uh, yeah, the Quetzalcoatl and the Priestess of Time. The time has come. The time to act is now. So you're making some changes. There's some changes you're making. It might even be to your appearance. Maybe you're, I don't know if you have an event or uh, a, just a date night or something you're deciding to dress up. She looks very, like, not overdone, but just, she's very beautiful. She's just, like, glowing. She's done up a little bit, but she she feels fierce. She feels very in control of her own energy field and her own sovereignty. You wouldn't want to mess with her. She knows what's up. And this is kind of the energy you're embodying of, you know, don't mess with me. I'm making changes to my life, and I'm having this glow up, both inner and outer glow up. So I don't know if you've been thinking about doing any kind of um, internal or external kind of glow up things. Uh, a way to do an internal glow up would be to do like a cleanse or a flush or a, you know, something really healthy for yourself, whatever that looks like. And then of course on the external, you know, getting your hair did, get your nails did, getting your, you know, I don't know, doing, doing something that affects the outer appearance. Could even be some new pieces in your wardrobe, something like that. But there's some changes you're making in these areas, Marlene. That's the point I'm trying to make with the, uh, those numbers adding up to a five and yes, 23. I shuffled and shuffled and they're back. It's back. So this is strong energy for you right now, which is amazing. <coughs> Sorry, guys, still dealing with the little cough and throat clearing all the time. <laughs> all right, Amber says, I'm asking so many questions right now. Asking for clarity for my true organic spirit. I'm, uh, I am raffled too much. I am at the edge with the situation at home and the spiritual attacks. Yeah, right? Um, I was just showing everybody at the beginning my... Um, I made these yesterday. I this is the second batch I've made. These ones turned out much better than the first because I that was my first run. I didn't I didn't know how to use these molds, but um these ones came out very smooth and clear. The other ones had some kind of like bubbling kind of effect on the outside. I mean they still work, I'm sure, but uh, they didn't look as pretty as this one. This is a reversal candle, and Maya Zahira talks about uh, reversal spell candles in her uh, book. I think it's called the Psychic Attack Source Book. Um, she's got two, almost three books. I think she's about to release a third, but, um, one of her two books talks about these <laughs> and I've read both of them. So I don't know. And they're both on Kindle Unlimited. Um, but yeah, this will see so psychic attacks pretty darn quick. And of course, um, if you, you can order, uh, reversal candles. They usually come in a glass, you know, those of you that have a Dollar Tree, there's these like glass candles that are like, you know, I don't know, nine, 10 inches tall. Um, but they actually sell, if you just go on Google, reversal spell candle. Um, and, and, you know, they probably sell them in local metaphysical shops and stuff too. Um, but that could be something, It's that's a seven day candle. So uh, some people will put those, you know, surrounded, you know, filling the bottom of their bathtub with water and then put the candle in the bathtub and literally let it go for seven days. I don't know that I'd be brave enough to let a candle be lit if I had to leave the house or something and I, you know, 
two boys and four sports right now. I'm, I'm leading a pretty active lifestyle at this point. I wouldn't want to leave candle unattended, especially with my life history of having a house fire when I was 13. Not a fun time. But um, that's why I wanted to make something smaller and quicker to use. And yeah, but also the frankincense resin and sage. And I know you're kind of in this state right now where it might be difficult to use all that, but uh, maybe even just getting some sage spray. They do sell it in spray for people like in apartments and stuff where you can't really light things up, have smoke going all over. Um, or even just setting your intention and cleansing it with, you know, crystals or, you know, whatever resonates for you. That will at least, Amber, take the edge off for you. And I know when, when you're feeling like you're just swimming in spiritual attack after spiritual attack, even just taking the edge off really doesn't do anything. Um, but the, the more you double down with your intention and you follow through and, you know, put your bubbles on and your pyramids over you and all, all the things, stand in your sovereignty and do all the things that you've learned for yourself. And I know it's a constant battle, just like we were talking um, about two years ago now about having to constantly balance those chakras. That's not natural. That is not an organic original blueprint on the human body because our human body, even, even in the state that it's in, you know, here in this realm, it still does everything and the most that it can to keep us in a homeostasis and balanced state, but it's struggling with everything they're throwing at us. So it's about calling on your true spirit to rise up like that lion within you to just take care of business. And if take care of business is, I don't know what to eat anymore. I feel like everything's poisoned. Like we talked about on the last live stream, um, call on your true spirit to just come in and take, you know, take, not like take control. Cause that sounds like, Oh, something outside of me is coming in to take control. And that sounds kind of yucky to me, but um, just, it is you. You are it. You are it. And it is in you. So find that part of you that feels more in control, whether it's deep down or closer to the surface, and just allow it to just take up more space and just roar. Even if you have to go somewhere and take a drive out, you know, up a hill or something and just get out of your car, just scream for five minutes. That that can be a very powerful practice to just embody, embody that roaring lion energy of your true spirit. That's not wanting to be messed with, but is constantly in this realm. <clears throat> Sorry, clearing the throat again. Yeah, having trouble sleeping. Yeah, and that's a thing. So many people are. These frequencies, they're blasting. They're, they're doing this. I had to, I had to type it out last live stream as well. That, that's what they're doing to our bodies right now. The boiled frog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, you gotta laugh or you'll cry. It's just crazy what they're doing. Uh, yeah, even around people, I feel alone a lot. So accurate. Yeah. And that is such a common theme in this matrix for so many of us. We can even be surrounded by the people we love and we know love us, but we still feel so alone. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I mean, I do, but I don't, but I do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a lot to be here. Hi, John. Welcome. Um, Oh, Amber A, you won our giveaway on Wednesday night. So you can also check that out. I timestamped it for you on the other video if you didn't see it. Um, yeah, just put an 888, which you have done um, in your question asking if that's what you do. So here we go. Let's get your let's get your card. Amber A. In alignment with true Amber A's true spirit. What does she need to know right now? And we have butterflies in gloom instead of in bloom. Ooh. So after sadness, happiness, and hope return. I love that. Yes. And I almost, like, if you look at this from a bit of a distance, this almost looks like a clover, but it's her wings, but or butterfly, butterfly wings. Um, it almost looked like a clover to me. So I don't know. Um, what I'm seeing is somebody, like a, a child specifically. So maybe it's your inner child, but um, this could be you. Um, not that you're a child, but we all have that inner child. Going out and literally just searching through a patch of clovers for the four-leaf clover. Anyone else do that as a kid? Just me? <laughs> I never did find one. Never did find one. But... It was funny because I was actually in a thrift store. I was probably, I don't know, 14 or 15, 16, somewhere in there. And it was in a thrift store and found someone had this, and it's tiny. I, ha I still have it to this day. It's like this big, just this little tiny circular, um, tiny little four leaf clover in resin. That's like a little uh, necklace pendant. I've never worn it because I don't ever want to lose it. It just sits in my jewelry box. I should probably either give it to someone or use it or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, going out barefoot in the grass, in nature. And of course, you know, nature is pretty uh, poisoned and toxic in many places at this point. But um, you can still set the intention to connect to the original blueprint of this planet and, and get the benefit, the healing benefit from Mother Earth in that way. 
All right, Amber. And that was your message. Um, yeah, let's see. Working on your skin and your face, drinking natural juices. Yeah, that's something I want to do is do like a big juice cleanse or just, I, I just feel like getting all the gunk and the yuck out. So, ugh. Yeah, been drinking. Oh, I'm back. Oh, Ethan's back. Let's see. Hope all is well. Aw, doing well. Oh, um, Amber, you can text me. You can text me. They're not like quote unquote for sale, but like, you know, any of you guys on here, like we could figure something out. Um, so anyone else looking to get their free card today, last call, last call, put an 888 in the chat, just type 888 and that will let me know you want a card. Aw, uh, you're so welcome, Amber A, absolutely. Hi, Rosie. <laughs> Hi, Jack Mac. Yeah, just uh, put an 888 in the chat. That's how we add you for a free one card poll. And of course, if you want to be added to the donation list, you can look at the pinned comment at the top of the chat or in the description below is how you can donate and be added to the donation list if that's what you're looking to do. All right. All right, Jack, Mac, let's get your card. And we have here the Butterfly Ferrets, I Am Reborn, number five. So there's some big changes coming for you, Jack, Mac, that you are feeling like maybe this kind of death card energy, which, you know, it's scary, scary death card, but like, it doesn't have to be scary because endings are inevitable. Change is inevitable. Got the number five there with change. So, but these changes are leading to a new beginning for you, a rebirth where one thing ends, another will begin. So this, I'm even seeing someone like decluttering a closet. That, that like comes up into my awareness a lot when I'm doing readings and it could be literal. It could be more figurative of just cleaning the clutter, making changes by, you know, clearing out that old dead, you know, withered energy and then just cleaning it out. What's left is what's alive and what's vital. And that does almost feel like a rebirth in and of itself is just cleansing and decluttering and purging and clearing what doesn't need to be here in your energy field. So love it. I need to take a leave. I have a headache. I need to rest. Yeah, that was me all day yesterday and the day before. Um, oh, I did not see your 888, John. Thank you for letting me know that before I moved on. So let's get a card for John. Yeah, I don't think I saw that. Oh, it's right below Ethan's comment. I do see it now. So <laughs> thanks for letting me know, though. I don't want to leave anyone out. All right, John, we have your Kitsune. I will show you whom to trust. And of course, you don't have to look to a fox or a spirit animal or a spirit guide or anything outside of you, not even me, to tell you who to trust. Look to your true spirit to help you discern who's telling the truth. Who's telling the truth, but there's some lies mixed in. Who's telling um, totally false lies and falsehoods? Your, your inner self will help you discern. And that's a very important thing is learning to discern. Um, because... Like, especially like in the new age movement and the new cage, the new age, the new age trap, as I like to call it. Um, there's so many beautiful truths hidden within a lot of lies. And yes, and it's the thing is, especially when we first awaken and then we kind of get complacent with inner spiritual path that we just kind of believe what we've believed, what we've believed for a while. And it just becomes kind of status quo or just kind of, you know, what we're operating under. and you know, even if you've believed, you know, the word lie is in the word believe. So it's like, you know, even if it's something you believed since you were a child or maybe even before you incarnated, like really start to examine and not just like with your mind. And yes, logic and reason are all valid, but also feel into the energy of does this, you know, discernment. Is this fully true? Is there a truth hidden within a lie, hidden within a truth, hidden within a lie? Is it all lies? This is our most difficult job here, I think, is just to find what is the actual effing truth. Because so many of us can get chills and really resonate with something, and then we can almost flip that thing we once resonated with completely on its head and be like, why did I ever believe that? It's because there was enough truth in something either with that belief or something adjacent to that belief that hooked us in, or we believed, you know, we, we put our faith into somebody that told us this is what you should believe or this is how I believe and I'm actualized you know a lot of these gurus out here 
<laughs> and that's something I will never call myself as a guru or a, a spiritual leader. No, mm -mm. I'm just, I'm just a, you know, I'm just a spirit trapped in the matrix or as trapped as one can be. It feels very much like a, a trap right now. Um, you know, oh yeah, you're so welcome. You've been thinking about that. Yeah. And now, now especially is the time before we pass on, because when we pass on, we're going to be just as confused, if not maybe more, especially if you have a, you know, <laughs> at the time of death, it, it, for some people it can be very traumatic for others. It can be more peaceful somewhere in between. We don't know. We don't know exactly how we're going out unless we do, which I don't know how I'm going out. So I, I can only prepare for the worst case scenario, you know, just not realizing I'm, I'm gone, you know, or not realizing I've crossed over. And then me being confused and being met with, um, as Terrence McKenna calls them, I think the, the machine elves, <laughs> basically the, you know, the spirit guides or the guardians or controllers of this matrix that try to get us back in the trap, back in the trap. It's like, you know, you want to have as much of your ish figured out while you're still alive as you can so that when you do cross over, you can use that well-earned discernment from your life to figure out what to do. And I would say, you know, if, if it were me, I'm personally, I'm not telling anyone what to do, but I'm going to avoid any lights. I'm going to avoid any um, crossed over loved ones, any crossed over pets, any ascended masters or Jesus. I'm avoiding all of it. I'm going to the void because the void is the potential for anything. And then I'm going to find my way back to where, you know, once I'm in that void long enough, hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, I can then use my un, uh, by that time, I, don't, I would hope there's no frequencies pumping on me or, you know, whatever that will scramble my discernment. And then from there, I can make my decisions. But I'm not going to make any other agreements to come back in. I'm going to tell all my loved ones probably <laughs> tomorrow or today or, you know, in the near future that, hey, if, if I pass away and then, you know, you're on your deathbed eventually, don't ever look for me. I won't be there. I'm trying to find my way out of here. I'm not sticking around, kicking around. Unless I have to, then I will. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be used as a tool by the matrix, hopefully. You know, I'm gonna try not to be to to keep my loved ones also wrangled here either. I'm not. At least that's my intention. <laughs> I had a weird vision, while, weird vision while taking a shower a few days ago. I was in a globe, and outside that globe was the darkness Darkness with a huge being keeping a look at me. Also, the darkness looks pixelated. Ooh, wow. Yeah, you can get a lot of truth uh, when you're in the shower. Just a lot of really interesting epiphanies can come in. Oh, David Hawkins has a good story about the void from his previous life. Yeah, there's a lot of truth and also a lot of, um, well, see, it's the truth as... You know, it's being presented that, oh, I met my crossover grandfather, and then I met this guide, and Archangel Michael was there, and la-di-da. Like, so many of these things could almost just be read off a script, because the, they're if it's not Grandpa Joe, it's, you know, Aunt Florence, or, you know, whoever that's coming through, you know, but it's not really them. It's not really them. It's false light. It's these entities, these controllers, pretending to be them. You know, and we could sit there and argue with who we're thinking we're talking to, like, prove this, prove that. Well, they can prove anything because they can get into your thoughts. They can get into your memories. They are in control of the Akashic Records, which is the record of every second, every nanosecond of what's gone on in this realm in every single lifetime. So even if they look, smell, sound like your, your crossed over loved one, I would say most likely if not 100% guarantee, it's not them. Because your crossover loved one either somehow found a way out, knock on wood, hopefully, or they're back in the wheel. And it's really sad. It's it's just, uh, we gotta find our way out, guys. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of just inner journey. I'm not even calling it um, meditation anymore because that, again, it just sounds so new agey. <laughs> and I'm so done with the new age crap, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm more about just like journeying, journeying into my own spirit and just seeing what I can come up with, what I can learn, what I can gain, what I can lose, you know, when I asked for clarity for it, I got the seven of swords. Oh, wow. Well, that is about deception. So maybe it's showing you how you've been deceived. Mm. Yeah. Going within. Yeah. I'm not trying to connect to anyone except my, my true spirit. 
which if my true spirit exists, which I do believe it does, <laughs> then it is and could never be separated from the original source creator. So I don't even have to try to, you know, use my true spirit as a vehicle or a stepping stone or a leapfrog to get to something outside of me because it, I am already that, which is, you know, and so are you and so are you and so are you. So it's like, if we can just tune into that part of ourselves and, you know, try to get the truth, whatever truth. And here's the thing, because we can ask for the ultimate truth. Maybe we're not even asking the right questions because think of, um, you know, think of taking like the SATs or something. So you sit down to take your SATs and they maybe, maybe the, the system of science, which, you know, is trying to discern or, you know, put this answer out to you, isn't the ultimate truth, but it's the truth that the test needs for you to get the right answer. So, um, you know, something I tell my kids with their, you know, when they have to do these big tests, you know, like computer tests, back in the day, they called them the Iowa basic tests when I was in, in like elementary and middle school. Um, they're called like star and some other tests now. There's like three or four different ones they have to take. Um, but I just tell my kids, you know, ask in your intuition, what answer does the test want? What answer does the test want? Because it may not be the actual truth or the real answer. Um, even math, I think, has been manipulated. I mean, obviously, one plus one, you know, and all that is probably pretty cut and dry. But, like, you get these, like, trigonometry and calculus and beyond. I don't even know. <laughs> Who's to say these formulas are correct? I don't know. I, I barely remember everything I needed to know from linear probability and statistics and, um, you know, all these algebra classes and stuff I had to take in college. <laughs> I mean, I could still do some basic algebra, but beyond that, probably not. <laughs> yeah, so if you're ever having to take any kind of standardized tests or true and false or um, what's it called, like multiple choice, just ask what, do, what answer does the test want? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Kashri has been invited to participate in math league at state level. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Congrats, Kashri. Very cool. I love it. Oh, ELA. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we're going to move on now um, to our donations. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. So we're starting with Brianna. Is she still here? Let me know if you're still here, Brianna. I'm going to say she probably scooted because she didn't come in for the one card poll. Did she? I don't think she did. So I'm going to leave a timestamp for her. She usually leaves her um, question in PayPal for me. So that's easy to find. Um, yes, she has a one card read. So B degree. And we're at 52.14. Boy, the time just flies, doesn't it? I feel like we've been live maybe 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hi, amazing Amanda. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, it's been a while. I hope you're doing well. Will you channel a clear and empowering message to direct my now moment? Thank you. Yes, let's tuning, let's be tuning in to Brianna's true spirit. A clear and empowering message to direct her right now from her true spirit, from Brianna's true spirit. Ooh, we have the hierophant. And it's very interesting. Her head is like in a helmet or a cage. A cube. Metatron's cube. <laughs> uh, I guess they were, I can't remember which ancient text talking about like how Noah's Ark was actually a cube. I've been just reading and reading and reading and reading and reading so much that I'm like almost like in information overload as to remember what this means. But um, the Hierophant is about tradition, doing things the way the system is put in place. So maybe you almost feel caged or trapped in the way that the system is set up with something and you're ready to break out of the box or maybe in some weird way, open Pandora's box. And then on the back, ooh, major arcanas for days here. Also the wheel of fortune. Again, another almost like containment here of masculine and feminine energies. So it's almost like you are flipping the script or ticking over into a new timeline to where you're feeling like you have more control over an outcome or being able to take an opportunity or pull opportunities to you that you can then utilize for your highest good. But let's see what these opportunities might be. Brianna is bringing toward herself at this time. 
Ooh, seven of pentacles. So there's patience. There might even be multiple things because she's got all this growing here, but she's, she's not sitting there just hum a ho humming about it. She's continuing to plant without resting on her laurels. She's continuing to plant a seed here, plant a seed here, plant a seed here. So yes, yeah, she's still nurturing and maintaining what she has, but she's also not just complacent in that. Not, not in a materialistic way though. This is not a materialistic. This might even be a search for knowledge a search for truth, a search for wisdom. But there's a, an element of patience that you're bringing into this or that's you're being asked to not feel like you have to have it all figured out right now. Especially if this is an opportunity. You don't have to even know what the opportunity is at this point, but just know that it is coming for you. And you continuing to do your inner work, outer work, take action, that is going to bring the opportunity to you much quicker than you just sitting around la-di-da, wishing, hoping, and praying for it. Yes, we can wish and hope and pray or whatever it is we do, but we also have to take action in the direction of what it is we're asking for to actually make it materialize in this realm. That's what the secret forgot to tell us. Hey, you also have to kind of work toward it. Hello. They left that part out. And then we have moon with cycles. So, I mean, <laughs> if you haven't been around a minute of talk me talking about the moon and, and how it basically harnesses and harvests our power, it may even be the light we see when we die. It's the reincarnation trap, the tunnel of light. Um, I have just personally completely disconnected um, as much as I you know, can in a matrix, my energy from the moon or the moon being allowed to harvest any of my energy. And it's really weird. And I don't, I'm feeling to say this because you know, a, a woman's feminine cycle is said to be controlled by the moon. I mean, that's no secret. We, we've all heard that at least a time or two or a hundred. <laughs> um, but since I have denounced the moon, and let me just put it out there. I've been sick, you guys. I haven't, um, you know, there's no way I could be pregnant. Just zero chance. <laughs> okay. Um, my period was just TMI from the, the guys out there, or the girls that don't want to hear it. <laughs> um, my period was like nine days late. And that is not, that is not a thing that ever happens to me, ever. Clockwork, clockwork, clockwork. Except when I was breastfeeding, you didn't have a period. I, there was no period. So, you know, whatever. So there might be something going on with your cycle that feels weird or off or just not the norm. And that's the reason that I brought that up because with the moon and the cycles, and since I just kind of denounced any allegiance or contracts that I've made to the moon, I have ripped them up. They are done and dusted. Um, and then my uh, cycle is late by nine days. That's something happened. <laughs> Let's just say, um, of course, I was really upset and mad. I'm like, what's going on? I mean, I'm only, I'm only 41, almost 42. This can't be menopause. And you know, my start, like my, my wheels start spinning. And then that inner knowing is like, no, it's coming back. Don't worry. You're fine. So there might be something going on with your cycle or just something you're doing to shift or change within the cycle. All right. One more, one more card. Um, we're going to go to this spirit animal deck. I keep the, <laughs> I forgot it was a one card read. So we may have gone on a bit long, but I'm sorry. Not, not that you're mad that I've gone on too long, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> Tree frog, soul song, meditation, creation, and rebirth. So pretty much what we were saying, you know, with the cycles and, you know, your creation, your womb energy, your, you know, <laughs> sacral chakra energy, and also the heart chakra with all this green. Um, again, it's no secret around here how I feel about the chakras. They've you know, energy hijack points. Um, maintaining our own energy is a full-time job in and of itself. And, you know, if we have families, if we have jobs, if we have, you know, people that depend on us, we can't just sit around balancing our chakras all day. We have things to do right in the realm. <laughs> so it's like, it's a lot. And, you know, especially, you know, as women, we can just feel this, like in this day and age, we can, we almost feel this sense of we have to do as much as a man and be equal and not everybody, but you know, kind of the general consensus is women can do everything men can do. And, and then there's this other consensus where things are almost going backwards to where, you know, we're letting the men control us and we're submissive. Like, no, we have to find our own balance. We have to, but we have to balance within our own energy. And yes, we have divine masculine and divine feminine energies, which are not exactly the same as like a feminine expression, masculine expression. So it's not quite what I'm talking about, but there is this like, balancing or recalibrating or just shift or difference that's coming to each of us like energetically that we're really if you can feel really into that intuition as to how to shift or change your energy to fit what's actually best for you that's going to be what you should do rather than just well 
you know, the, the internet says I have to hustle and grind and be this boss babe. And like, maybe even if you want to be these things, there's still this very feminine receptive energy to you, Brianna, that needs the rest, that needs the recuperation, that just needs to nurture and tend to what's in front of you and, and your own body as well. All right. I hope that resonates for you, Brianna. All right. So Florence, let me know you're here, Florence. Um, I know you already posted your question, but um, I'll timestamp just in case. We're at 59.35. Florence. Okay. Florence. Okay. And of course, stay tuned, you guys. We still have our giveaway and our drawing coming up. To win a free reading, two chances to win. And then Marlene has donated for a one card after Florence's question. So. I'll go find Florence's question up here. All right. So Florence, we're going to go to the Light Sears Tarot for this question. Um, I've been going through so much inner transformation the past few months and years. I would like some guidance on that and, and oh, if any positive manifestation is on the way, maybe already in April or May. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so let's tune in to Florence's lovely spirit. Um, inner transformation in the past months and years. Let's start there. Let's start there. Let's kind of make this kind of a two-parter. Um, Went through much, so much transformation in the past months or years. Guidance on that. Guidance for Florence on this transformation. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Lots of healing. Lots of journeying. This is also a travel card. But, um, I mean, I, I really do feel like your travels really are tied to your sense of tuning into your spirit. Um, they, they really are very one in the same. When you travel, it's like you feel closer to your spirit and feel much more like you are transforming your energy. So that might even be that when you're not traveling or it's been a while since you've traveled, you almost feel this like kind of like anxiety of, I need to transform. I need to travel. <laughs> oh, wow. And then we have the moon and it's like, she's under the water and you know, her, her life force, her life breath is coming up from the water, from the depths. So there might even be this sense of overwhelm at times or feeling like you're drowning or you're barely able to even keep your head above water because you could just sit here and heal and heal and heal and peel and, you know, transform and transmute and alchemize and do all the things and all the inner work. And there's still so much left to do. You're not alone. And I think that a lot of times that is by design to keep us busy, especially stuck in the past. You know, we're told, you know, you can't switch your bypass. You got to heal your past. And yes, that is true to a point ish ish, because can we really truly heal from all this stuff that was just put upon us? And there might've even been stuff like in our, you know, our birth chart is basically the code um, that the matrix let us in here with. And it tells the matrix Everything about who we are and our persona and even a little bit about our spirit because our spirit is still kind of imprinted within that uh, birth chart as well. Um, and especially like where your moon sign is, I think is going to be very telling. If you can find specifically, um, you know, you can look up your Western chart and if that resonates most, please do that because this is about you and your transformation. So do what resonates most for you. But if you want to know the chart that you were coded with coming down into this matrix, you're going to want to check. Um, like the Fagan Bradley uh, chart, or Ayanamsha chart position. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you can go to astroseek.com, click on uh, birth chart, click on um, the house, equal house system, Velo, V E H L O W, and the Ayanamsha of Fagan Bradley. That's going to put you to, you know, complete alignment with where the stars actually are placed um, in the heavens <laughs> um, to get the true information. Um, but there's something that is coming up for you that you are learning about either the nature of reality of the matrix of yourself, of your true spirit. There's something coming up that you're learning about that's going to blow your mind and it's still yet to come. And that might even be part of what is manifesting for you. But I do see something separate with that as well, which we're going to get into in a moment here, Florence. But let's see as far as guidance on all that you've done with all this journeying and transformation in the past months and years. Yeah. 
And it was, it came up in reverse and it's Sawin with death. But again, it's almost like, you know, we have to die and be reborn, die and be reborn, die and be reborn over and over again in this matrix system. And it's like, when is enough enough? And you're like, you're turning this on its head. But there's almost this like, and this could be like, this to me, it feels more metaphorical than literal. It's not a literal death. So don't worry about that. This is more of a going within and just tuning into the energy of death or being recycled back. Maybe you've even had like visions of that or dreams about that. Or, you know, in meditation, you've been in that, you know, afterlife and then brought back, brought back, brought back. Let's just see if there's any other nuggets of wisdom or information Florence needs to know about all that she's done to transform. Wow. Hex with banishment. Um, I'm actually getting a really good vibe from this card though. You know, normally uh, putting a hex on someone, no, we're not dealing in black magic here. Not, not at all. Not whatsoever. But this banishment, it's like you're banishing away those energies that are trying to hook you in or trap you in or keep you stuck, keep you in this cycle, keep you in this loop. It's like, you're done. You're done with all of that. Or at the very least, you've come to a point where you're ready to move on. And it might even be you utilizing your own magic or better yet, let's use the word alchemy. Because magic really is a word of the matrix. Matrix, magic, you know, uh, alchemy is something we just do naturally as a spirit. Um, we don't need magic when we are pure magic, you know, uh, we're alchemists really on a spirit level. Um, so let's get into the manifestation portion and put these two cards back as well. Um, I just saw the wheel of fortune. So yes, something you've been working toward manifesting is coming up for you very soon. I would say April or May is a pretty accurate time frame for that. But let's just see any positive manifestations on its way. Okay, so slippery energy, slippery energy. So it might be something you have to kind of make that choice and move on it when it pops up. Okay, interesting. So there might be someone coming into your life, someone younger, or they just seem more youthful than maybe your energy is more serious or more mature. Their energy might be more youthful. We have the lovers coming up in reverse. So something could even be like someone from your past coming back, especially if this person is younger than you. Someone from your past coming back. Doesn't mean you have to get in a relationship or friendship or whatever with them. It doesn't mean that. But also there's a choice coming up. If it has nothing to do with romance specifically that you are manifesting in the next few months, um, this does feel to me like a choice to study something. This person's like got all these light bulbs above her head. And you know, kind of the cartoon depiction of the light bulb over the head is like, ah, oh, epiphany, aha moment. Um, and we've got four light bulbs above the head here. So it's like four different like big life realizations that might completely take your life in a new direction, but in the best possible way. And that what you're manifesting is a change of direction in life that is much more in alignment with your true spirit rather than just what the matrix wants you to basically be distracted doing with your life. And sometimes us, and I know this sounds blasphemous if you're in the spiritual community, but sometimes us just being stuck in this mode of healing, 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 healing is a distraction because we're so caught up and stuck in the past because, you know, we're having to heal from things that happened in the past. I'm saying, yes, there is a time and place for healing, uh, but I'm almost more calling it peeling at this point. Because if you think about it, you know, call it karma, call it sin, call it, you know, whatever it is that keeps us coming back or the way they trick us into coming back because, you know, we do have empathy, we do have love, we, we feel shame and guilt when we've hurt somebody. Um, <clears throat> so that's how a lot of times they trick us into coming back and reincarnating. Well, you know, in this life, you killed this person or you did this really bad thing to this person. So now in this life, they're going to do it to you. So have fun with that. And then we're incarnated and then all these crazy bad things happen. And we sit here and think we're at fault. And yes, I guess maybe it's some way we are from a past life, past life, past life, past life. But like, if we're just going to keep incarnating and passing traumas and pains and wounds and damage and slaughter over and over and over, when is enough enough? You know, when can that karma, okay, eye for an eye, okay, done. Like, I don't think it works like that. I really don't. Otherwise, we'd have been done and dusted and on to the next many, many lifetimes ago. I, I, I just don't buy the fact that karma, but, 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 <laughs> You can look in our birth charts. 
that have been drawn up at the moment we were born. And there's plenty of karma dished out in that chart. So is it really something that we deserve because we did this thing or that thing in the past? And now that person's going to turn around and do it right back to us. Or is this some energy that's been placed on our energy that we're now having to play out for the sick game, whatever we want to call this matrix? Yes, it's beautiful. And yes, there's good things happening here as well. But for the most part, this is a something has to eat, something has to eat something to keep living death cult system. I don't know. I'm on my soapbox now. <laughs> it doesn't seem natural because it's not. It's not. This isn't natural. Um, so maybe you're just saying at some point, Florence, coming up, enough is enough with some soul contract you've signed. And maybe you're literally writing that soul contract out and then ripping it up or burning it or doing some other sort of significant intention you're placing on certain soul contracts to say, I'm done. I'm done with that. I'm done. I've paid my dues. I don't need to keep cycle circle in the drain of this healing that I've do been doing in this area or with this person or karma from this. And you're just saying, I'm done. I'm done. Your intention is very powerful. All right. So yeah, you're manifesting an ending to something you've been circling the drain on over and over and over. And not just in this life. I'm seeing life, life, like, like a line of lifetimes. So you're realizing something and you're, you're saying, no, we're done with this crap. I'm done. So heck yeah, Florence. And then on the back deck, you have the star. So you literally have healed something and you're ready for, for some wish fulfillment and some good stuff to come in for you. Uh, I would say as early as April or May, for sure. Because we also have the Ten of Cups on the back of the deck. Like, uh, hello. Beautiful combination right there. Doesn't happen every day in this matrix system. So consider yourself very... I won't even say lucky. You, you have done this. You have done this work and you have created this for yourself. So good job. Your hard work is paying off. <laughs> All right. So next we have Marlene. Yeah, Magic the Gathering. Oh, Michelle has made a donation as well. Cool, cool. Okay, so let's get into... I think Marlene is my next. And then, yes, Michelle. Okay, so Marlene, go ahead and post your question, my dear. Can I trust my 12-year-old with her phone? Overall, she's a good kid, but I took it away for lack of trust. Okay, let's just see if there's anything uh, suspicious, I guess would be the first word. Um, anything that's just not in alignment with what because you know what your intentions are or what you would expect or don't want her to do on the phone. So we're going to align with what your expectations are with the phone, whatever that is, because I know it's different for each parent. So we're, we're just aligning with whatever it is you expect or the level of responsibility you expect from her with her phone. And we're just going to see if she's playing by those rules. And I know there are parental controls or, um, <laughs> parental spyware things you can put on. I, I personally don't have that on my son's phone, but my husband has some sort of like app tracker thing where he can see my, my 13 year old has a phone. My nine year old does not <laughs> and will not until he's in middle school. Um, but even then, like we were pretty like, okay, if you're at home and you're not talking to one of your friends on the phone, cause he, he actually calls his friends a lot. They talk on the phone a lot. So I'm glad that that art has not has not died, that they're not just, uh, you know, texting and, um, you know, looking on YouTube all the time. But um, my husband has an app that can see, like, how long he's been on an app, uh, what exactly different websites he's going to and all sorts of stuff. I don't know what it's called. Um, I could look into it if you want to know what that is. Um, but let's see. Specifically for the expectations that Marlene has put on her 12 year old daughter with her phone. Let's find out if her daughter is, you know, following the rules, so to speak. Seven of swords, oh! Although I would say if, if there is something she's doing that you don't want her to do, it's not as bad as you think. It's nothing real crazy. Um, yeah, but I was, I was getting a hint of maybe she's saying, oh, I wasn't on my phone after school, but she actually was. Something like that. So it's kind of, it feels innocent, but yet it is a, a lie or an omission of truth in a way. But it's not like she's, yeah, again, it feels, it feels on the very innocent side of deception, if that makes sense. So we're, we're like at tier one where we're talking like, you know, Enron, like 
tier 20, like way, way, way down there. Um, my sister thinks, uh, has it on her kids. I might ask her. Yeah. Just see what she has. Um, let's see. Caught her in a lot of lie, uh, a lot of lies, shark lies, but still lies. Right. Right. And that's what this feels like to me. It's like, and this really is, it does really feel like her just trying to exert authority in her own life. It's not her trying to pull one over on you or, you know, watch things she maybe shouldn't be. I mean, if she is watching things she shouldn't be, again, they feel very much more benign than what you may, you know, worst case scenario think she's watching on the internet, on her phone. Um, but let's just see anything Marlene else, anything else Marlene needs to know in alignment with the expectations she's placed on the phone with her daughter and how her daughter is showing up. Seven of Cups. Yeah, and she might even just kind of go down rabbit holes. I mean, me as an adult, I do this where I'll, I'll be looking up one thing and it'll lead me to something else that maybe has nothing really to do with what I searched, but like it got my curiosity. She's just a very curious creature. So maybe she wants to know what certain things look like or, you know, but again, there's a very innocent place she's coming from, even if she is you know, making lot, you know, white lies or, you know, omitting truths. It's a very natural and again, it does feel very innocent curiosity. Um, but a lot of times, you know, curiosity can lead us down, you know, as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Um, the road into the matrix paved with good intentions. I'm going to pay off that karma in this life and look at us 14,000 lifetimes later or however many still trying to pay off that initial karma. <laughs> The original sin or whatever. Um, but let's just see if there's anything else Marlene needs to know. Oh, small lies. I got, I got what you're saying. Yeah. Anything else Marlene needs to know. Yeah, Ten of Swords. So I would say have a conversation with her. And, you know, if you have taken the phone from her, sometimes, uh, you know, that kind of is a natural consequence of not using the phone in alignment with the way you said. So for her to maybe just have certain times of the day she can have the phone or... Uh, you set very clear boundaries and it's about setting very clear boundaries and um, having very, very clear communication both ways, especially though from you to her about what's expected. Because if you just say, don't go anywhere bad. I mean, what does that even mean? You know, I'm sure you've set much more clear boundaries than what I've just said. But um, this is someone who's confused because they don't really know where the line is as well. So if you just tell her, you know, straight out, you're not looking at nudity or, you know, whatever it is. Um, I don't want you on TikTok or, you know, whatever parameter you set, make it very clear and let it be known to her that you are checking in because that can kind of almost act as that like angel on her shoulder. Like, Hey, mom said, don't do that. Okay. I won't, you know, um, I feel in a way it is natural, but I'm struggling on how to go about it. Yeah. So let's just see if there's any advice before we close out. Any advice for Marlene about her daughter and how to go about, you know, having these conversations and setting these boundaries? Oh, the world. Yeah, you're going to figure it out. You're going to figure it out. And um, it might even be that you just, you either delete certain apps off the phone or remove access to certain things on a phone until she's older. Um that'll just kind of act as a natural boundary. Um, like we did uh, remove, or we never allowed my son Boston to put YouTube on his phone. He can still go, you know, on YouTube, on the internet, but we let him know, hey, uh, you know, we, we don't really want you just perusing YouTube. Cause I mean, <laughs> we all know it's heavily censored, but it seems the bad stuff that we don't want our kids looking at just gets to stay and stay and then stay and stay and stay. Um, so again, maybe setting that you're only on your phone at these times. You can only be on your phone when mom or dad are around or, you know, whatever it is. Um, yeah. Clear boundaries and no TikTok was what me and my husband talked about this morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's you're already, you already know what to do Marlene and just following through with that, that will help put an end to certain behaviors that you might even feel like, oh, this is a slippery slope. Like maybe we've already lost too much control over the situation. No, you're good. You're good. You're going to be able to nip whatever this is in the bud, but you're going to have to be very consistent with these boundaries. Because if one day you're like, well, I, I said only two hours of, you know, time on your phone a day. And now it's four hours later. That's really more on you than her. And I'm not saying that's what's going on, but you know, having those clear boundaries and sticking to them consistently 
no, you know, not, and, and that's the hard part about being a parent is the consistency because, uh, you know, I know many times I've confused my kids on what the rules are because, well, one day that was the rule, but now because you're busy or you don't, you have a migraine or whatever, now I can do it. Like, and of course kids will take any little bit of leeway you give them, you give them that inch, they're going to take the mile. Um, so yeah, be very, very consistent. Yeah. Lay down the law, <laughs> you know, however that looks for you and your husband to be the authority here. And with that consistency, she'll just, you know, she'll know where, where the boundary is. She'll be contained within the boundary and she won't try to, you know, at least with the, the, the rules that you put in place, she won't try to go too far out of them. Once she realizes there's consistency and there's um, consequences and you're checking up constantly on the situation, she's going to know, well, this is, I'm not going to be able to you know, do anything bad, you know, so I'm not gonna, uh, I tend to go more with trusting them because they are good kids, but trust. Yeah. And I would say if that trust was broken, then that is, that is your golden ticket that yes, there do need to be boundaries placed here. And that's not a bad thing. You know, a lot of times we want to be, you know, our kids to like us and, you know, all the things. And, but we can go so far the other way that there are no boundaries. And then we've, Yes, I mean, I would say having having kids who question authority is good. That is good. But we don't want them to question our authority in certain ways. But then they do because they're kids. And that's what happens. Um, so again, it's like, the, like you say, the double edged sword. It's a fine line. Just use your intuition to guide you. You're, you're doing a great job. If no one's told you that, Marlene, you, you are doing a great job. So just keep putting one foot in front of the other and doing what you need to do to be that, that good parent you know, that good parent for your specific kids, because a good parent to these kids versus a good parent to these kids, it's going to look different. And even a good parent to, from kid to kid in the same family looks different because each kid needs different amounts or levels of boundaries than other kids do. So, you know, your next youngest kid down the line, she might not need all these parameters put on because she just doesn't have the desire to go on this app or that app you know, it's, it's going to be different for each kid. And it's like each kid will throw you a curveball. You thought you had it figured out with kid one and then kid two comes along. And it's like, whoa, what is happening? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I hope that helped. Um, you're doing a great job. So I know, I know it feels, it feels so sticky and like, Oh, what do I even do? But like, you're doing it. You're doing a great job. <clears throat> right. Michelle. Get into Michelle's reading. Oh, and we have another one as well. So Michelle for a one card, and then we have another donation also for Amber. Amber nine in full read. Okay, so Michelle, one card for Michelle. Go ahead and post your question, my dear. We're gonna get right into it for you. All right, someone in my family passed. Oh, I'm so sorry. And my family family member offered me their car to buy. It's a Honda, but I feel weird taking it. And I've been doing research on my own new Mazda uh, that I feel disappointed. Um, okay, so she's still continuing her question. I'll take a quick little water break. Um, so does Spirit want me to have this Honda or is it okay to invest in the Mazda that I actually want? I'm already hearing it's the Mazda. It's the Mazda. Um, I don't want to feel forced to get a car that my heart, yes, absolutely. Because every time you'll get behind the wheel of that Honda, you will think about that Mazda or the fact that you basically now regret or have maybe even some resentment that, well, that person died. Now I have this car and I don't, didn't even want this car. You can pass on that opportunity. And I would say, go, go with what's in your heart. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel it is the right move. Because there's too much of that person's energy in that car that it can never feel like your car. And I'm not saying that's the same with all used cars because, you know, we can get a used car and from day one it feels like ours. But just the fact of the circumstance and just everything you've been through with the passing of this person and just, you know, maybe even being offered the car, it's not right for you. And you know that. You know that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would just say, you know... I really do thank you for the offer, and that's a very generous offer, but um, I actually already have my eyes set on this Mazda, and you, you can even just say, hey, thanks, but no thanks on the offer. You don't have to give a spiel or try to give a presentation about it either. No is a complete sentence, but if you want to, you know, put this person in, and I don't even think the person that you're talking to 
is going to feel offended in any way. Even if they kind of play it off like, oh, well, I kind of thought you would take it. Uh, don't let it don't let it be about that. You know, yeah, I think I think April's a great, great month for that. But let's tune in. Let's just see anything you need to know about the Mazda. Because we already got our, our answer. It was very clear, even just in your question, what the answer is. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And there might even be two Mazdas that you're looking at. They might be the same model and even the same color, but maybe different miles. Or um, even if they're new, you know, one might have slightly more miles than the other. Or, you know, one might have black interior. The other one has tan interior. I mean, there might be two or, or a number of, of different ones you're kind of picking and choosing. Um, oh, one's a sedan, one's a hatchback. There we go. Um, but let's see. And we have here the chariot. You're getting a car. You get a car. You get a car. You get a car. I always feel like Oprah when I do that. Um, one red, one black. There we go. Um, we got one black, one white. So it's like, choose which one feels, you know, picture yourself or, you know, do your test drive. Which one feels the most like you? Which one feels the most luxurious or, uh, sexy or fast. I, I don't know, you know, whatever adjectives you want to put in um, to how you want to feel when you're driving your new car, new to you car, even if it's not brand new, uh, it's still your new, new, new to you, new to you car. Um, but I mean, very clear, very clear message here. Pick what you want. And maybe even just really, before you even go drive these cars, just run through it in your, in your kind of journeying or meditation and just kind of picture yourself in the car driving the car both kind of through traffic you know stopping at lights and also just out on the open road you know just really envision this being your car and feel which one feels better because you'll know you'll know let me shuffle this the correct way <laughs> oh that's funny in the the candle here red and black <laughs> you're choosing between um yeah, let's get the fair price question. Will she get a fair price? Yeah. At the very least, you're going to feel happy with it. Even if it's more than you wanted to pay, you're like, oh, but it's worth it because it's it's a very reliable car. It has this. It has that. It's got, like, all the bells and whistles. Um, this, is, this is someone who's emotionally fulfilled with what they've done or the choice they've made or, you know, how their life looks. So I would say you're getting you know, you're still paying for the car, you're still having to make your payment and everything. But you're feeling like the the trade off for having the sweet new ride is so worth it to you. So yeah, I would say any closing statements, arguments, advice, wisdom for Michelle on her new car. <laughs> yeah, healer with which so this almost feels like a healing for you. So I don't know if the car Correct me if I'm wrong. I want to say the car that you have kind of has been giving you issues and you're like, do I repair it? Do I, uh, you know, get a new car? Like, what do I do? Um, and I know you've kind of been going back and forth. You've been looking for a new car for a while. So you've had this old car that almost feels like it's weighing you down. Um, so this, just this uh, change in direction or, you know, trading in, I don't know if you're trading in or selling the old one or what, what it is you're doing with the old one. And it doesn't even matter at this point. It's just allowing this new energy of this new car to come into your life is going to be very healing for you in ways you can't even imagine right now. Um, when we buy a new car, it actually like almost acts like a level up or a free, like, you know, one up on like Mario, almost like a free life to your Venus. Your Venus does, uh, you know, control your love life also controls your, your cars, um, your luxuries in life, your jewelry, uh, your home. These are all Venusian things the material world. Um, but it can also be a big boost to your love life. And also like raises and promotions is also ruled by Venus as well. Jupiter also, but, but also Venus. Think of millionaires being Jupiter, billionaires being Venus. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be healing for you. And you're going to feel like you get a good price. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. Uh, Divyanasha, Divyansha. I hope I could say that right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So Amber is the next donation I see. All right. So let's shuffle the deck. Oh, Divyansha, um, I did I did pull you a card earlier. Um, so if you go back um, through the list, you'll you'll hear your reading. 
You'll have to go back though, like kind of scroll back and kind of find the chat and where you were in the list of 888s. And um, yeah, so your, your message should be there. I do remember doing it, so it should be there. <laughs> Unless we've shifted timelines and it's not there. Mandela effect. <laughs> All right, Amber, guidance for the next three weeks, please. My true organic inner spirit and the true organic creator. Tuning in for Amber. Advice for the next, or guidance and advice for the next three weeks. Ooh, new opportunity. Or this, it's almost like you can take these next three weeks and make a new opportunity for yourself. If none are being presented to you, say screw it. I'm making my own opportunity. I'm not waiting around for some opportunity to float on by. Or, you know, if there's something you want to do, just do it. <laughs> Here, like Nike, just do it. Um, what else? Ooh, hard work paying off. And look at all the mandalas. I mean, wow. These are very mandala-like in the Light Sears Tarot. So, yeah. And it's almost like the wisdom. You're, like, gaining wisdom. Because we can almost look at, at this owl as either giving this to her or her giving it to the owl to then take out into the ether or out into the world. Yeah, mandalas. Um, but it's like the creativity, the life force, it's in your hands. It's in your hands in both of these depictions. She's, she's holding it in her hand. Wow. And it's like, you can even look at this as your own true spirit giving you this wisdom or guidance. Uh, again, we're backwards. I'm still trying to get used to how this is set up. <sighs> Yeah, you're working on something or you're just making that decision or setting that intention to start really going in on something that excites you in life. Yes, creativity and motherhood as well. You know, we can't ignore the fact you're a mother. So maybe even making art, creating things, doing things with Kashvi that also feel very creative and like a new opportunity for you. This could even be talking about her opportunity with the, the math thing, with the state, the state math thing. And her hard work paying off because you two are very connected. Um, so there is a message. Maybe something's going on for the next three weeks that, she, you know, maybe you have to fill out the paperwork or um, she has her first meet or whatever it is. Um, but you're feeling very, very just proud and just um, really creative. And I know that's probably not a place you've been feeling lately because of, you know, having certain people there for these next uh Still a couple weeks, right, to go before the in-laws leave. But let's just see any other guidance or advice coming. All right. Yeah, so there's also this element of rest. And you may be getting a lot of downloads. Um, again, you know, a lot of downloads coming in from spirit, your true spirit, while you rest. While you, you know, take some time for yourself. Um, and also it's like kind of a rest period that we have to take at times you know, when you're pregnant, you get tired out of nowhere. So there might be instances where you're getting tired out of nowhere, be them, you know, spiritual attacks, or, you know, just your body saying, okay, I just need some rest, what whatever the cause is, allow yourself that rest. And um, I don't know if you've been doing this, because I had mentioned this to you. And if you haven't been doing it, oh, start doing it. But if you have been doing it, just keep doing it. Um, when you do put yourself in those three bubbles and stuff, and then put a big womb or uterus around those bubbles. Yeah, because it's like you're wanting to go into this like womb space in both of these cards here. Or your your body is really desperate for just, you know, even if you're not physically tired, it's like you're spiritually tired, which can then leak into you're emotionally tired, you're mentally tired, you're physically tired. You're just tired all around. Um, and eat, it almost feels like at this point, no amount of rest is actually resting me up to make me not tired because I think it is, you're just spiritually tired. So when you do take a nap or, you know, go to bed for the night, you know, setting those intentions that you're going to get deep and restful sleep, restorative sleep, connecting to your true spirit as you sleep. Um, I even, I don't even say, you know, I, I just go to my spirit. I say, I get deep restorative rest and sleep while I am asleep. And I did that last night and I actually, I fell asleep with a pounding headache. Woke up this morning feeling just so light on my feet, just ready for the day at 5.45 a.m. And I'm not a morning person, but like, you know, when we got kids, you, you gotta be a morning person. Um, but I, I haven't felt this good. And I still have the little throat clearing and coughing. 
all the fun phlegm that comes along with being sick. But I probably haven't felt this good since the end of February. So I'm feeling better. <laughs> so you're going to start to feel better. But yeah, I mean, you're still very overwhelmed just with the situation at hand, obviously, because these people are still in your house. Um, but it's like between you and your spirit and your daughter, it's like you're finding times to be creative, to get the rest, to, you know, restore yourself in the midst of spiritual warfare. Um, desperate for emotional, physical, spiritual rest, all the attacks and dreams at home, then in my, my in-laws fighting all the time, calling me out for not being best at handling, gosh, oh my gosh, yeah, what a nightmare, literal, it's like, oh, no thanks, oh, and then now you have to be on, you know, not only are you mom and, you know, hostess to, you know, for, for your, to uh, host your in-laws at your house, now you have to be a party host, and do all the cooking, all the cleaning. Like, what else do these people expect from you? It's just, it's gross. It really is gross. It's like, let poor Amber have a day to just rest. Like, oh, earlier comment. Oh, on weekend, my husband's uncle called us as bad parents for not parenting Kashvi well um, and said she will fail. And when she grows up, then my in-laws are giving advice and scolding me. Well, we can see how well their parenting turned out with your husband, completely emotionally closed off. Yes, maybe he can earn and, you know, look successful in that regard. Sure. Okay, great job, in-laws. You did good on that. And but where's the love? Where's the empathy? Where's the passion? I don't, I don't feel it anywhere. So I would not take advice from people who aren't doing what it is you're trying to do. That's like trying to take advice from someone who's just a wizard at working at McDonald's drive through but you're here trying to create an art business. They don't know anything about what you're trying to do. They might think they do and let them rattle on, rattle on, rattle on, but in one ear, out the other. Water off a duck's back, as they say. Just let it roll on by. But in the moment, it doesn't feel good to be scolded and yelled at, even if you, you know, you say you started doubting yourself. That's Again, another form of spiritual warfare. They're trying to get you to crack and get you to just do things their way and be part of the matrix. It's like, no, no. He's actually shouting at Kashfi in front of his parents and they are not saying anything to him. All the advice is for me, obviously, because that's probably how they parented him. Because we, you know, will either take the parenting style we received and say, oh, hell no. And we'll turn it on its head, which I don't see in his case. This is more his case. The other case is will be exactly like our parents were, sometimes better, a little bit, sometimes worse, a lot. We just never know. But um, when we're a conscious parent, or we want to be really conscious in the way we're parenting our kids, we can still me make mistakes, we can still mess up, but it doesn't mean we're the most horrible person in the planet. I mean, yeah, it, it's, I would say it's all about them. It has nothing to do with you, Amber. So you know, you love your daughter. You know, she's an amazing spirit. That's all that matters. Truthfully, that's all that matters. You're doing your best and your best when you're fully rested and you're feeling good is going to be a hell of a lot better than when you're under constant psychic attack, ready to just throw in the towel. Your best is going to look a lot different in that instance than it looks like when these people are, you know, these parasites are not in your house and you're able to focus on your creativity and your purpose and your passions. Your best with your daughter is going to be a lot better then than it is when you're in survival mode like you are right now. So give yourself that grace because they're not going to give it to you, obviously. Yeah, I'm missing your mom so much. Um, and then in one dream, I saw her as dead lying on the floor and then suddenly woke up saying, I'm not dead. I don't know what to make of it. Yeah, well, that that is one thing I've actually learned is a form of psychic attack because um, probably three times, maybe four times in the past month, month and a half, I've had dreams that my dogs were dying and then dead again. Like Walter, he passed away. He just fell over and, and died. I'm He had bad cancer for like six years. Um, but it never got so bad that the vet was like, you need to put him down. So we just kept letting him go. And he kept living and kept living six years with cancer. Um, over 60 tumors on his body that we could at last count. Um, but he went out, went pee, came back in, fell over dead. So he... You know, he took his life. He took his own life. Um, he was done at that point. He he's like, no, nah, I'm done. I'm I'm done with this. 
I'm out, guys. See you later. Here's one last little uh, smelly present on the on the carpet. Oh, Walter. Um, but then I had a dream that um, like his back legs were like bitten off, and he's just pouring blood. But he's like still trying to make his way. Um, that is a form of psychic attack that's going on because, of course, these entities know that I love my dogs very much. They know I love my kids very much. They don't love my husband and my family very much. So they will find ways to, you know, have dreams where my sister dies or Boston jumps off this dock in this murky black water and I can't find him. Even though, fun fact, I can breathe underwater and every single dream I've had underwater, I can breathe underwater. I don't know why that is. Just since I was a very young kid, I can breathe underwater in my dreams. <laughs> I don't know why. But like, that's, that's the way they, and of course these dreams are more far and few between when I set those intentions not to go to play in the dumpster fire of the astral. But even when I do set those intentions to return to my, you know, my, my true spirit's got my back, um, they can still find a way in because we, our physical body is resting in the matrix while we're sleeping. So we have to like double, triple, quadruple up our protections just to get through the night, you know? Um, but yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, you have chills. Oh, my God. Uh, last two weeks, my dreams have been crazy as if I'm fighting in sleep as well, although I'm doing all the intentions. Yeah. Yeah. And I've noticed, you know, things are just crazy out there in the, in the dream state. And even if we are getting a full eight hours plus of sleep, we're we're waking up tired. It, it's It's constant bombardment and attack. But, you know, think of it. They can attack us like that in our sleep. And then we wake up and we're grumpy because we didn't actually get restful sleep. We were busy being chased in the astral or, you know, our mom dying and, you know, her body resurrecting and all sorts of craziness. And then um, wake up having that on our conscience all day. And then um, just not being on our game because we're just thinking about that. And then they're, oh, she's thinking about it. Let's plant more thoughts, more thoughts. It's like, where what way do we turn like where are we not being attacked it's it's just constant and it's everywhere and we're the ones that have to keep rising up and being these spiritual warriors but the saddest fact of all is the more we rise oh we have a heart cloud oh i hope we can see it i'm <laughs> like we gotta be these spiritual warriors uh and but the more that we put on that spiritual warrior suit the more we get attacked so it's like a catch-22 double-edged sword i'm gonna show you guys before it morphs and disappears hopefully we can see it Okay, so for me, I'm seeing it here. Not for you guys, though. It's over, more over here. Wait, it's kind of in this... Can we see it? Am I even in the right direction? Okay, so not that way, but this way. Okay. I can't see it on my screen because my screen kind of... Okay, so it's like right in here. This. It looked way more heart-like a moment ago before I got my bearings there. Um, it was a full-on heart when I saw it. Just a perfectly nicely shaped heart. So I would say that's our our little boon from the original source creator that, hey, I know this sucks, but you guys work hard and get the heck out of here. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, inside that big bank of clouds as well. Yeah, but it was like more forward and whiter and fluffier than the rest. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi there. All right. So let me see. I want to say that was our last donation. So let's go ahead and do our giveaway. Giveaway, giveaway, and our drawing as well. So giveaway time. So if you're new here, you've never participated in the giveaway, or if you have, um, but here's here's the directions. All you need to do is figure out, or use your intuition, or guess, or whatever mode of operation you like best to determine what card am I pulling out of this deck. And this is just a you know regular tarot deck with all the 78 cards. So ooh, I like it. I like it a lot. So already, you know, it's a positive-ish card, right? <laughs> if I like it, it must be positive. Um, yeah, so start putting out your your intuitions or your guesses as to what tarot card I just pulled out of the deck. And if you are the first one to get it, you will win the reading. That's how this works. Um, and of course, if we're going and going and going and no one gets it, I will narrow it down, as I do. <laughs> but it says we have seven people here, so hopefully we have a few players in the drawing today. And the, oh, sorry, the giveaway. The giveaway. All right, so we'll narrow down. It's not a major arcana. Not a major arcana. Someone guessed the number or what, or the label in front of it, but not the suit already. Someone has guessed. So it's a suit of some kind. 
someone has guessed the label in front, but not the suit. <laughs> so I've kind of given you another hint as to what this might be. Or at least narrowed it down a little bit. <laughs> All right, so it is a cups card. It's a cups card, narrowing further, narrowing further. <laughs> and of course the delay, it's always funny because there's like other guesses that are what I didn't say, but of course, because there's a delay, it comes in a little later. <laughs> All right. So. We're looking for Ace through King of Cups, somewhere in there, somewhere in there. <laughs> I think we've guessed everything but what this is. <laughs> it feels so silent, like all the fans and whatever are just very quiet right now. Ace of Cups! Amber got it! And it was Amber that guessed the Ace of Swords when I said someone got the first either number or label but not the suit. <laughs> so Amber, there is your Ace of Cups. This is a great card. What's your question? Go ahead and post a question. And for those of you that are here, put a 555 in the chat and I will put you, enter you, write your name, to enter you into today's drawing and Maybe next time's drawing, next time's drawing, because this is our perpetual drawing bag. And we're already, we're getting pretty full in here already, man. All right, Michelle, let's get Michelle entered into the drawing. Michelle entered. Marlene wants to be entered into the drawing. Oh, I saw your comment about your, your drawing win. I'm glad it resonated slightly differently for you just because, you know, it was a different day. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cut some new strips of paper here for our entries. All right, where are my scissors? Over here. Okay. So we entered Michelle and Marlene. Now I have to enter Amber. Right. I should just cut up like hundreds of these and just have them ready, but I always forget until I'm like two minutes to live stream. And then I'm like, oh, I could cut those real quick or I could, uh, you know, sage the space and get ready that way. <laughs> I always set my intentions as well. So, all right, Amber, nine in. And John wants entered as well. Oh, your internet cut out. Oh, no. That's never fun. Especially when you're trying to do something and the internet cuts out. It's like, why me? All right. Here we go. All right. I'm not looking. I'm really going in everywhere. As you can see, I don't have anyone picked yet. Oh, here we go. Who's the lucky winner? Banana Anna S, which she's not here today, but I will leave her a timestamp when it comes to that. All right. So the event on Sunday, any guidance for that? She's on edge. Yeah. Okay. Well, I feel like it's going to be a good opportunity. You may even meet somebody that you have a, a connection to, like a soulmate type connection or just somebody that feels like a friend. You might meet somebody. Um that just feels good or or another way we can interpret this is you feeling really good about how you're showing up because this is a self-love card as well but let's just see it's definitely gonna be a new opportunity you know aces are new beginnings and opportunities and the pages are as well you're on a new beginning you're maybe learning a lot of good information that will help you in the future and i'm not exactly sure what this event is for is this like an art a thing an art event art thing art show something like that um, you may be making new connections, networking, this is uh, good news, or maybe you're getting someone's information so that you can contact them and, you know, create something. Um, or maybe someone's wanting to commission your work. Very cool stuff. 
What else does Amber need to know about the event on Sunday? Any guidance? Any guidance? I would just say show up as your authentic self and, you know, try to tune into your true spirit that day to tune into the happiness and the joy and show up in your joyful state. Because I know things haven't been very joyful for you lately. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying fake it, like fake that you're like, oh my God, I'm so happy. But like when you can tune into just that feeling of your spirit and happiness, it can help. Um, oh, it's a ritual um, at home followed by lunch and 90 people are coming. Okay. So I would say this is someone you are, there's something or some connection you're making again with the look, look at that. So it's like you're showing up in authenticity and there's a, there's like a soulmate connection or something from past life that's coming back in, but it might take some time to grow. So if you're not meeting, we didn't call anyone when we got home. Oh, so we didn't call anyone when we got, oh, when we got the home. Okay. Well, oh, well, I see the truth of people. So it helps me in the future. Okay. So that could be what this communication is, is you're getting news or clarity confirmation on who's a good person, who's not a good person, how to kind of vet people out or know the truth of a situation. Yeah. But there, but especially if you make any connections with people, it might take a bit of time to grow because we got seven of pentacles here, but it does take time. Oh, like a housewarming. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So let's see anything else Amber needs to know about this event. Housewarming type thing. Two of Wands. So yeah, again, there's a lot of like future energy here, like making plans for the future or okay, networking, something that I'm kind of waiting on or being patient about. Maybe you're even talking about your art with someone, something like this possibly. Um, yeah. So it's like you're, you're making connections. You're talking to people or they're talking to you. There's communication going on here for sure. I don't know where I put Banana Anna S's name. Don't let me forget to do her reading since I can't find her little name slip. It was here and now it's gone. So there might be something you're trying to find and it disappears because that just happened during your reading. So like you can't make this stuff up. Um, or maybe uh, someone's name that like slips your mind later, but then somehow they reach out to you in a different way and you're like, oh, that's that person's name. Okay, because I want to talk to them about this other thing. Um, yeah, but there's, there's kind of, Things being set into motion for future connections. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm getting here is like networking, connections, meeting people. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I mean, I don't know where it could have gone. I just put it right there like I always do. And it's just gone. I don't know. The fan's not going. I don't know where it could have gone. There's nowhere it could have gone. No little crooks and crevices that it go into. I don't know. Anything else Amber needs to know about the event on Sunday? Closing argument. Three of swords. Okay, so there might have been someone. This to me feels like not your energy, but someone coming in is in grief. So I don't know if they've recently, yeah, they've lost someone close to them. Like they've lost, they've lost a loved one. And it's almost like you had gone through that grief with your mom. So it's like you're a you're a good person for this person to connect with because you know what that grief feels like. Um, yeah, how can you lose stuff like that? I, I just don't get it. There's nowhere it could be at all. I mean, what the heck? Um, so yeah, but this person has been through grief and it's almost like them just connecting with you alleviates some of that heartbreak. And also we can take this the other way. You know, you've just been in constant, like feeling like in pain and attack mode that this lightens that burden this is like a healing salve to your energy because the energy can't get worse in your place right now than it has been. I mean, just having, you know, your in-laws there, specifically your father-in-law and your husband, it's not a good energy for you to be in or what have you, but it's almost like these other people's energies coming in are somehow going to alleviate some of that tension for you and act almost like a healing. Yeah. Like a ritual, like a cleansing, a healing. So I would say if, if you are doing some sort of ritual to cleanse the home at the time, put your intentions that all the negativity just gets recycled back to source. And uh, this is something I talked about. And I did see you commented on um, how you get those ideas in the shower on the last live stream. Um, so I'm going to assume you maybe heard this part of the live stream about the 
kind of tra like the tra the divine fire trash can that I throw things. I'm like, I'm not even making, you know, questioning anything anymore or what they're doing there or whatever. I'm just, I'm burning it all. Go recycle back to source, recycle back to source. You could even put your whole property into this divine healing fire to clear anything that is not from the original source creator or that is in your benefit. It'll clear all the entities and everything. Um, and I would say maybe even doing this during this ritual, just envisioning this fire, spiritual fire, not literal, uh, you know, original source creator fire of purification to come in and clear out anything that is not in your highest alignment during this thing. Yeah, there you go. You're already planning to do that. So then you already know what to do. And it's going to go really well because this is a new opportunity, new beginning, and it feels like fresh, like a weight being lifted. Of course, your father-in-law will still be there, I'm sure, but it'll just feel a little lighter or maybe a lot lighter than it has been, even though he's still there. So yay, yay, Amber. So yeah, I, I don't even have to say I'm wishing you the best with this because it looks like it's going to go pretty well. So that's good. That's what we want. Yeah, that name is just long gone. I, I mean, there's nowhere it could be. It's just gone. But I remembered. Banana Anna S. So I'm going to write the timestamp. So we're at 155.10. Banana Anna S. 155, won the giveaway. Sorry, the drawing. I always mix those two up. You know me, guys. All right. She won. She won. She won. And I would show you your name, but it literally disappeared. It, the slip of paper, there's nowhere it could have gone. It is It is not here. It's not any of these that I just cut. None of those are it. I always set it on the lip of my little uh, laptop stand here. Just disappeared. It's gone. But I promise you can scroll back and find where I showed your name. I pulled your name, Banana Anas. So it, it's interesting because you disappeared. It's like you disappeared from the realm, the reality. Oh, Brandy Lynn's here. Let me write your name and put you into the drawing. We already drew the winner, but we can still enter you. That's how this rolls. Yes. Brandy Lynn. Wow, I cannot spell, or I can spell, but I can't write very well today. It's very sloppy. <laughs> but let's enter Brandy Lynn, and then we're going to get into Banana Anna's giveaway. Sorry, drawing, drawing win. I call the giveaway the drawing and the drawing the giveaway. Right? I know when, when you got kids home for the week for spring break, it's like you just forget what day of the week it is. It's like you're in a groundhog day. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Brandy Lynn. I mean, uh, Banana Anna S. <laughs> but I hope you're having a good day, Brandy Lynn. All right. Banana Anna S. What does she need to know? What does she need to know? Ooh, we have Ten of Swords. Something closing out. I'm, I do feel this has something to do with your sister. So it's like her energy is is here to help you finish something here and finish what you started. There might be something that has been like on your to-do list that you're like, Oh, I know I need to do that. And this could be for a while. We're talking a while, like since last year, year before, year before that, something that you've been looking to just either cut out of your life, get rid of a project that you just need to finish something along these lines. Um, and your sister, it feels like her energy is there to support you. Yeah. And it could even be something that you keep thinking about. Like, I just need to do it. I just need to do it. I just need to do it. But I see that's like your energy in the background. Like, victory, I did it. Victory is mine. King of the world. Um, and he's like standing on like an iceberg mountain type thing back there too. Mountain. So it's like climbing the mountain. It's been it's been quite a journey from start to finish. Um, and it feels very like a mental journey, you know, with the, the swords. A very mental energy. Could even be like toxicity, belief systems, you're closing out. Um, yeah, limiting beliefs. Yeah, specifically lack mentalities. There's something you're closing out. Um, I think the energy of just these eclipses and just, you know, what the matrix is <laughs> brewing up this week is, is like prime real estate, prime environment for you to be able to close out those limiting beliefs because you're realizing, uh, I just heard there is no spoon, like on um, the matrix. Where it's like, you're sitting there trying to bend the spoon, but there is no spoon. But it's like, I can't get out of here. There's, I'm locked in. But like, literally, the key is right there. And the lock is right there. Like, just, it's like, free yourself. Like, there is no spoon. Free yourself. There's something you're freeing yourself from. Mentally, spiritually. That maybe causes you a lot of, like, mental anguish or headaches. Or 
just sadness, uh, gloom, doom, you're, you're closing it out. You're done with it. You're throwing it in the spiritual trash can of fire, <laughs> as we've been calling it, or the recycling fire back to source. I don't know. I, I gotta, I gotta co coin a better term for it. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that, I guess, huh? We're caught up on donations and we've done our giveaway, our drawing, and they're trying to pump an ad out to you guys in the next 55 seconds. So I guess we'll just do this. We'll be done. Um, so yes, I'm going to go. I'm going to go have some lunch. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful, happy, fantabulous weekend. And I hope to be back here. Uh, fingers crossed. I don't have a migraine. I've been having a lot of headaches and migraines lately. So that's, that's fun for me. Uh, but hopefully not on our live stream days because I like meeting with you guys and I don't like missing it because I have way too much fun. Um, so thanks again, you guys, so much for all those likes, com comments, donations, subscribes, and all the things. I know I completely got that backwards. And I really, truly do hope to see each and every one of you right back here at Homie Pro Tarot Live next time. Um, and very soon, reminder, very soon we will be shifting the Wednesday, Woo Woo Wednesday schedule to 11 a.m. Mountain Time rather than the regular 6 p.m. Mountain Time. And that will last from sometime in April through about mid-June. Um, so both the Friday and Wednesday shows will be at 11 a.m. Mountain Time every week. And those are the two shows that I do. So uh, next week, I we're starting practice. Um, I'm going to have to look at the schedule. We're, we're getting this schedule, that schedule. We got soccer starting next week. Basketball started this week. Baseball starting next week. It's like all flooding in. Um, although I don't know what the practice schedule specifically looks like. I know Boston has basketball practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 to 8.45 p.m. That's very late for me. I, I, I mean, for, for kids, like, basketball practice, that seems so late, but, like, that's the only time they can get in the gym. So that's when it is. Uh, so that's Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. Um, I'm not sure about the rest yet. Not yet. Uh, the teams are formed for baseball for Wrigley, but I don't know about Boston yet. But allegedly, the practice starts for everybody next week. So I'll know more then, and I'll let you guys know. Sports ball. All right, you guys, much love, and I'll see you next time. Bye.